My name is Tom Alpel, and welcome to my first video, The Art of Slipform Stone Masonry. Slipform Stone Masonry is a fast and easy way for the novice to build stone walls that are strong and straight. There are several different ways of building slipformed stone walls, but the most common method is to make a hybrid wall that is half stonework and half concrete reinforced with steel. The slip forms are placed on both sides of the wall and held together with wire ties at the base, as illustrated in my book Living Homes. Here we have nailed wooden stakes across the forms to secure the tops together. Stones are placed down between the forms with the good flat faces against the forms, then concrete is poured in behind the stones. I described slip form stone masonry in detail in my article in the Mother Earth News magazine, and proposed a whole new way of doing slip form stone masonry by framing the entire structure out of beadboard insulation panels first, then slip forming the stonework up the outside. That would eliminate half the form setting work and the insulation would be secured to the wall in the process. Of course, I hadn't actually tried the technique myself, but I was contacted by an enthusiastic reader in Colorado who wanted to give it a whirl. This is the amazing castle she built with the new technique. Danny did all the stonework while her 73 year old father mixed the concrete. After visiting Danny and her family near the completion of their house, I returned home to give the method a try too, but on a little smaller scale. I asked about scrap panels at the local manufacturing plant and was led to their trash pile out back where I could have absolutely all the panels I wanted and more. The factory was too busy at the time to handle my order anyway. No problem there, I am always delighted to recycle materials that would otherwise end up in the landfill. So let's go back in time a few months and see how this project started from the very beginning. Remember, before you do excavation work, be sure to contact your local utility and ask them to locate underground power lines. We propped the rebar up on small rocks to allow the concrete to seep underneath. Then we added a wire mesh for additional reinforcing. Okay, here comes the concrete. I guess we finished our formwork just in time. Screeding the concrete is probably the most physically demanding part of the whole job. Here my brother is filling in the low spots ahead of us, while Robert and I grunt back and forth with the screed. Assembling the panels was like working on a big jigsaw puzzle. We had to find the pieces that best fit together with the least amount of cutting. As we assembled sections of the wall, we screwed wooden plates across the joints to hold the scrap pieces together. Later, after the stonework is completed, we'll be able to come back and remove these wooden plates from inside the building. As we put these pieces in the peak, we find that this building is already starting to look like something, only a few days into the project. We used 9 inch wooden spacers to position the bottoms of the forms correctly, then nailed them securely to the wood framework left in place from pouring the slab. There is no need to cut the forms to an exact fit at the corners. You can run one form out long and simply butt another form up against it. Use the spacers to position the bottoms and nail them down securely. Use some spacers to check the top, then nail the forms together. Always check your work with the level. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer, the better. Pipe strapping is one fast and easy way to secure the forms. Just be sure to use your wooden spacer to set the proper width. 
Clean the stones thoroughly to make good contact with the concrete. Any stones with square corners should be saved for corner work. Put in the largest stones possible all the way across the base, then fill in around them with smaller stones, being careful to offset the joints. Pour concrete in behind the rocks as you go, then add new layers of stone and concrete until you reach the top of the slip forms. Pack the concrete solidly in around the stones to fill the voids, but avoid mushing it all the way to the front of the stonework where it will run down the faces of the rocks. Now you can keep stacking the forms up the wall if you have enough, or if you can get the bottom forms out, then you can leapfrog them up over the other set. But we usually prefer to strip the forms off the day after doing a section of stonework so that we can clean the extra concrete off the wall while it is still somewhat fresh. At first sight, the wall is both exciting and disappointing. Yes, it looks like stonework, but it also looks like a mess. A little bit of hammer or chisel work sure makes a world of difference. To set the slip forms for the six foot level, we set them up on stilts and shims for support while we screwed the metal strapping across to the panels. Remember to keep your fresh masonry work well watered. It helps the cement to cure and maybe even helps the wall to grow. Although slip forms make stonework easy, it is still a matter of placing the stones one at a time and bucketing concrete in one can at a time. When we reached the top, we capped the ends with concrete and screeded it off even with the rafters. The weather turned from cold to hot to cold to hot again and we covered over our work with scraps of carpet to keep it from drying out too fast. Now this scary looking stuff is free paint acquired from a thrift store. They never wanted it in the first place, but some people drop it off at night and stick them with the problem of disposal. I brought home a selection of white latex paint for this project, about half of which turned out to be useful. We laid all the panels out in the field and started painting them, just as a new storm was brewing and blowing. On the second coat, we stopped to put each panel up on the roof just as soon as it was painted to get it out of the blowing dust and drips of rain. Next, we insulated the roof, fitting together more scrap panel pieces. We put all the panels on from above, then went back and screwed them on from underneath. We use a mortar board consisting of a scrap of plywood with a wooden handle screwed to the bottom and push the mortar into the joints with the aid of a putty knife. I like to empty the mortar board first, then go back and smooth out the joints. The grout dries out quickly, so be sure to keep it well watered so that it can cure with the greatest strength. Before putting the steel roofing on, we sealed the gaps between the beadboard panels with expanding foam sealant. We also nailed 1x10 boards up along the gable ends so we would have something more solid than beadboard to attach the roofing to. Then we put on the steel roofing, being very careful to get the first sheet square with the building since it affects how all the rest of the sheets lay on the roof. Alright, one more thing before we quit. A simple jelly jar fixture to finish the front side. Now isn't this the cutest workshop you have ever seen?